Hey everybody, it's Jay here. Today I'm going to talk about binding. I think that even though there's a million and one videos out there about it, I need to make this one. So what is binding? Binding is wearing a binder, which is a vest-like item of clothing. This is a binder that you wear like this over your chest and it compresses the boobs that you may have down so you look like you have a flat chest. For example, I'm wearing a binder right now and I will insert the picture here of me and how my chest looks flatter in my binder. Binding can be really dangerous so there is obviously a lot of clarification that needs to be made with binding safety. A mistake that a lot of younger trans guys and newly out trans guys and trans masculine people can make is using ace bandages when they don't have access to a proper binder like this one. Ace bandages are designed to compress wounds to prevent swelling when you get an injury. For example, I sprained my wrist, it started to swell, I got an ace bandage put on. But when you wear one around your chest, it gets tighter every time you try to breathe. So ace bandages can cause severe deformities in your ribs, they can cause collapsed ribs, collapsed lungs, punctured lungs, broken ribs. You don't want to go there, even as a last resort. You should never bind with an ace bandage. Beyond that, even if you have a proper binder, like this one that I keep showing you, which really just looks like a vest or some kind of underwear, binding should not be done for more than eight hours ideally and 12 hours as a maximum. But for different people that varies. For example, I wear a Velcro binder because I wear this for more than two hours, I feel like I'm going to die. So, I have a very low limit as to how long I can wear a binder for, whereas some people have crazy limits. I have friends who can wear their binders all day, all night, all day again, and be fine off it. They'll be absolutely fine. And now onto the actual binders. This is a GC2B mid-length white binder. I think it's probably a large or a medium or an extra large, something around that upper end of their size limits. And it is an overhead binder. By that what I mean is it's one piece straight around and you put it on over your head. I will put in a picture of me wearing this because I don't wear this that often anymore because it's not very comfortable for me. Previously I had two underworks binders which are another form of overhead binder. They're a lot well more well known as GC2B is a newer company but GC2B is run by trans people which is nice. Overhead binders are probably the most dangerous form of binders simply because there is no way that you can loosen them. You have to get the right size because you can't change how tight this is going to be on you. Whereas the binders that I wear, Velcro binders, can be loosened throughout the day so you may start out binding tighter than you do at the end of the day which I do quite frequently. And you can get custom made ones of these from a company called Shapeshifters Inc. So you can get custom overhead binders, which is very nice. And now, this is a Velcro binder. I look like a plonker doing this. This is a Velcro binder. As you can see here, there's Velcro along the side here. Hard bit here, soft bit here. And you smush them together and that's your binder. This is an extra large and I bought this one. It's a jersey mesh binder, I think, from the Les Love Boat shop online. By the way, that shop is based in Thailand, I think, or Taiwan, something we can do with a T in that general Eastern area. And the reason it's called the Les Love Boat shop is because in those areas, lesbian is used as a slang term for people who wear binders. So just a clarification on that. Um, Velcro binders are considered safer because you can more easily loosen and tighten them depending on your size personally. For example, I'm rather chubby. While I don't have very big chest, I'm rather chubby so I need a bigger binder anyway. And Velcro binders have really worked for me. I have three of them. This one is my oldest one and it's the weirdest size. It's I've got two XLs and one weird XL that doesn't really fit the same way as the other two but it's like six months older so it's understandable. Velcro binders are more expensive though. This These binders I think were around 60 each but for your safety if you can afford them I would recommend them. There are other styles of binders for example there are clasp binders that have the same kind of clasps that bras have and there are zip binders which have zips especially there are swimming binders that you can buy from underworks that have a zip in the middle and 
I've heard that they're not that wonderful because if you do so much exertion, the zip starts to come down and then you're like, oh no, cleavage. So you don't want that to happen. But if you want a swimming binder, there are a few other places that sell them. I think Outplay sell swimming binders as well. I will link to all these shops, shops and brands in the description. You can also make your own binder. When I was early in my transition before I came out to my parents, I used tights for one. Doesn't work if you're heavier, if you're heavier size like me, tights aren't gonna do you any good because they just won't be tight enough, ironically. I also tried using compression shorts where you cut a hole in the crotch area of the compression shorts and you plop it on over as if it's like one of these. That didn't work for me either, again, not tight enough. And eventually what did work for me after I came out to my parents and I was early in the transition was a sports bra. I At first I tried doing the two sports bra method, which is you put on one sports bra front ways and the other one on backwards. That almost made me pass out. So don't go too far, gotta listen to your body. I ended up taking that, that bra off and I just went around with one on backwards. And that worked really well for me while I was still early in my transition. So I hope you took away the most important things that you need to learn from this video, which is be safe when you bind, don't use ace bandages, and binders are worth the investment. They can be somewhat expensive depending on what style you buy, but I've been wearing this binder for almost a year, I think now, over a year maybe even, and it's still in good nick even though it looks like it shouldn't be. It doesn't look as great as it used to, but it's still in perfect condition. It still works perfectly for me. So I will link to all the shops and brands I mentioned below, and I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe even learned something. So, see you next time. Like and subscribe.